Hey guys, it's Diana. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about episode 13 of In the Dark. So, uh, it is season finale time. We are at the last episode of season one. It is titled, It's Always Been You. And, uh, you know, it was quite a roller coaster, let me tell you. First off, we start with a flashback where Dean is visiting Nia, of all people, as, you know, a detective to ask her questions or whatever. This is a couple of years prior when Chloe got into the car accident and, you know, Dean's wife died and we find out in this exchange that that is in fact the same accident. Chloe required a lot of surgeries and medical attention afterwards and Dean's wife died in the crash and Dean's health insurance as a police officer was unable to cover the brunt of it and it would be a lot of money out of pocket which Nia knew because I guess she had a nephew or has a nephew that had bone cancer or bone marrow cancer or something. I don't know. So she offers to make him a deal he will drop the charges against her for a shooting that happened and she will cover the cost of Chloe's medical bill. In addition, Dean is also going to, you know, be the lookout, like, for Tyson. Like, he's going to keep track of Tyson and make sure that he stays out of trouble, which Tyson eventually does catch on to. He realizes that Dean is one of Nia's guys. Dean realizes that Tyson is one of Nia's guys. I'm gonna get into that. So we're in the present day, the flashback's over, we're at Dean's house and he and Murphy have been talking all night in bed laughing. The sun is up, it's a new day, they're having fun. Murphy goes to work, she's talking to Jess about how she wants to take it slow and doesn't want to like sleep with Dean too soon. Felix walks in and gets very stressed out and mad at the both of them and yells at them to get back to work because he's never having a good day at all this season. So we then cut to Jules who's walking into work as you do as a detective and she's looking at all of her co-workers and trying to find out who may be working with Nia and she pulls Dean aside. They go out of the precinct outside into you know the street or whatever and they talk and she tells Dean that she suspects that it is a dirty cop who is working with Nia and tried to cover up the whole Tyson thing. Dean of course plays dumb because, you know, we know by this point that it's him, obviously. I mean, it, we were led to that conclusion at the end of last episode. So, that's pretty much that. We then cut back to Guiding Hope and find out that Felix lost the company because of the whole thing that happened a few episodes ago with his financial advisor or whatever and his parents cut him off as well because he made that rash decision when he was high to buy Guiding Hope because he's an idiot. So they have to come up with $75,000 to keep the company, which is a problem because they are all broke. Next, we see that Chloe is at the police station. She's doing some math homework and getting pissed that her phone can't do everything for her even though it can do a thousand other different things. She had a half day at school that day, which is why she's at the police station. Jules goes over and talks to her and Chloe reveals that they had gone roller skating the night before, which we know because that is what happened the previous episode. And Jules finds out the name of the roller rink from Chloe. Dean walks in at the end and asks Jules if she's still on to have lunch with him and Chloe, and she declines. Chloe mentions offhandedly before Jules leaves that she should take her niece roller skating or whatever. And so Dean asks, you know, what they were talking about, whatever, and he gets all nervous because he's trying to cover up this whole thing. If you remember, in the last episode, he had told Murphy that he was going to meet Jules when he left the skating rink, when in reality he was meeting Nia, we all know that. We do later find out that Jules had left work to go to the roller rink. Dean is able to track her car and it's at the roller rink and that's literally all we see of Jules this episode until a little bit later, which again I'll get to because like, my god. Darnell calls Guiding Hope from prison. Murphy picks up. He says that he sent her a letter, which Murphy later finds out after FaceTiming Jess is not in her apartment. Now, in the last episode, Dean had showed up, started cleaning, and brought in Murphy's mail, and he took the letter, which Murphy later finds out that Dean took the letter from Darnell because Dean doesn't want Darnell, or Dean doesn't want Murphy. I can't keep these people's names straight. He doesn't want Murphy to find out that he's been working for Nia, which like, duh. So 
she calls Dean and asks him if he saw the letter. He says no and lies, obviously, because, like, what else is he going to do? Murphy hangs up on Darnell and gets all mad because, you know, if she knew Tyson, she didn't know Darnell. She obviously doesn't believe him, which, like, honestly, I wouldn't either because everybody's been manipulating her. And Dean even says the same thing when she brings it up to him later is that Darnell has been manipulating her and so has everybody else and she shouldn't be listening to any of them. Dean then goes later on that night to update Nia on the whole situation and she thanks him for telling her and then offers him a plate of meatloaf because apparently in addition to running a drug ring Nia is a very kind and thoughtful person who makes meatloaf. So Jess and Felix are on their little side plot adventure this episode which is always fun. They're trying to talk about the whole issue with Guiding Hope. We are intercut with them going into the woods and Murphy and Dean in the car uh, going to a cabin or a house somewhere for the weekend for a getaway. And Jess and Felix go into the woods. They find Max's food truck roughly where Murphy had told Jess to find it. Felix kind of gets very suspicious, you know, because they're taking directions from Murphy. And Jess later tells him that the reason why they did this is because Max hid $100,000 somewhere in the woods by the cabin that they were in a few episodes ago when he and Murphy were hiding from that hitman. So they get in the boat, they row to the cabin, and after looking around all day, mind you, Felix is wearing Joyce's coat, which is not keeping him warm, and he doesn't have gloves or a hat. He's not prepared for this cold, snowy weather at all. Meanwhile, Jess is. And they're looking around, and we see Nia's hitman from a couple of episodes ago. He's on the phone talking to Nia, saying that, you know, there are a couple of kids there with a van with a dog on it. And Nia obviously realizes that they're from Guiding Hope, which is where Murphy works. Eventually, they do end up finding the money later on that night. The hitman calls Nia and tells her, and she says to just let them keep it, which she, she kind of has a little bit of an ulterior motive, even though we are led to believe that she's doing it out of the kindness of her heart, because who would have thought that she would be the nice one, right? We then cut to Murphy, who gets a call from Jules. She informs Jules that Dean had told her in the last episode that he was going to see Jules after the skating thing. Jules tells Murphy that that isn't true, or tries to tell her, and tells her that he was seeing Nia, when Jules is literally tased and chloroformed and whoever is like attacking her is wearing like a scrub cap and like surgeon gear and they inject a needle of something into her forehead. We pan out. This is such a weird scene, okay? So we're like, I think we're in Jules' apartment or we're somewhere and we pan out and there's a cat just hanging out on the couch and the guy who is like, I, I don't know if Jules is dead or what is happening, but like the guy who is doing this, just like when he, when they're done with the needle and whatever they're doing with Jules, just like reaches over and starts petting the cat. We are then back in the car with Dean and Murphy. Dean had gone inside to get milkshakes, which is when Murphy was on this phone call with Jules. She ends up finding the matchbox from the coffee shop in his car, the coffee shop that she and Jules had visited in the last episode, and she knows that this is the same matchbox because she had felt the logo on it from the one that she had. So she obviously feels very suspicious, but doesn't lead on to him that she like knows that there's something up and like honestly if i were her i'd be freaking the hell out so we're at the cabin she and dean are talking they go outside to smoke apparently dean gets like relaxed when he smokes or whatever in the process of them smoking murphy is like freaking out internally the entire time she ends up having a flashback to when dean was questioning her right after she found tyson and says that tyson smelled like smoke he didn't smell like himself and she smells that same smoke on Dean's cigars that he's smoking, which like, I mean, okay, listen, if it didn't take you like this long to piece everything together, obviously she knows now when she probably knew beforehand that like Dean did it. I mean, you know, so in all this, she and Dean end up sleeping together, which like surprise, surprise, and Dean does end up telling her the whole truth because she admits to him that she knows what he did and she needed closure and she uh, and he owed her that much so she tells her what I had said earlier basically that he and Tyson were never supposed to cross paths they were never supposed to know of each other until Tyson and Wesley were arrested for possession like back 
like in that flashback a few episodes ago with the narcotics detective or whatever. So that's when Dean actually ended up meeting him face to face. Then they had formed a relationship sort of, but like we cut forward to a flashback still the night that Tyson died. Tyson had called Dean and Dean got really pissed because Tyson shouldn't have done that obviously and says that nobody can know about their partnership. Nobody can know that Dean is involved and that you know Tyson should never have called him. Tyson meanwhile is like very understandably freaking out because Wesley is going to kill him. Wes got out of jail, thinks that Tyson narked on him for whatever and that's why Tyson got off like within a couple of hours. Tyson tries to ask Dean to tell Wesley or admit to somebody like everything that had happened and how Dean was involved. Dean obviously isn't going to do that. They get into an altercation and Dean literally like holds him up against the car and strangles the kid to death. Well, until he loses consciousness. Dean finds a blanket or something and puts it over him. He puts Tyson in his trunk and he's like, you know, freaking out. And then a little while later, Tyson wakes up shortly after, you know, Dean opens a truck. Tyson's like in the blanket or whatever and he's freaking out and he's like screaming for help. And Dean just shoots him and kills him because nobody can know Dean's involvement because everything that he's done, he's done for Chloe. Which like, I don't even feel bad for him. If anybody is the victim in this, it's Tyson. He was an innocent kid. He did not deserve to go out like that. So what led to all this is that Tyson had actually threatened to expose Dean and that's why Dean went off the deep end and decided that killing him would be easier than doing anything else literally in the universe. We cut back to present day. Murphy says that she does understand what Dean did. She slips into the bathroom and tells her phone to stop recording in like a whisper, but because she's stupid, the volume on her phone's screen reading software is up like really, really loud and it says uh, stopped recording or whatever, which like we are led to believe that Dean heard and he asks her what's taking so long and like if she's okay or whatever and she says, you know, just a second. She tries to escape out the window in like socks and a bathrobe and Dean is like right outside in his coat, which like is so unrealistic. I can't even tell you. And he just freaking grabs her and she's struggling and they're in the car next, like beating the crap out of each other while Dean is driving down the road, like down the highway. He hits her and apologizes and then she hits him. They just they keep hitting each other. And it's to the point where like they're screaming at each other and they're literally trying to kill each other. And Dean loses control of the car because he can't drive and beat the crap out of Murphy at the same time, obviously. And they end up rolling off of the highway, like the overpass, onto the highway below. Like they they smash through the guardrail and the car just flips and rolls and lands upside down like right below on the next like on the highway below the overpass or whatever then it's just like silence which is real fun so in all this we see a flashback of murphy and tyson tyson and murphy tell each other that they love each other and they are listening to a song it's one of tyson's favorite artists i can't remember off the top of my head who but it's very sweet. And then we're in the present day. Dean is not doing well. He is in the hospital. It appears that he may be on life support or something. He's definitely, definitely on a ventilator. And there's like, you know, the EKG or whatever going and like he, his vitals are being monitored and he's got bandages everywhere. Murphy's sitting in a chair next to him. She is very visibly cut and bloodied and bruised. We also find out that she broke her arm. She broke her right arm. We see her using her cane a little while later throwing away the box of cigarettes or the matchbox or whatever from the coffee shop that was in Dean's car. She's sitting there with Dean and she decides to tell him not about what a bad person he was but about what an amazing person Tyson was and how he had a life and his life was worth it and she's going to just tell Dean every single thing that she can remember about Tyson. We also find out that her recording that she made did save to the cloud. So Dean is like 110% done. Like he's so done, it's not even funny. Murphy goes back to her own hospital room and lies down in bed and Nia is there. And she says hello. 
and she's wondering how she's doing and she reveals that her friends did take the hundred thousand dollars that max had laundered which is you know technically nia's money obviously murphy says that you know she's sorry it wasn't her intention obviously she she had no idea what was happening she was trying not to be murdered so nia says that it's good because it's an investment for her because everything had been causing her so much trouble murphy included recently she's lost a lot of her fronts and now she needs a new one which is guiding hope apparently and murphy immediately tries to back out of it and say that felix is not going to agree to it which like we know he's not going to agree to it nia does not take that for an answer because unless murphy can pay off all that money right now they're screwed and she gives murphy a key and leaves and murphy's calling after her asking her what the key goes to and what happens and that's it we cut to the credits we are done with season one i for one have some questions first off what happened with chloe is she going to be okay like is she with a relative is she gonna be with murphy and jess for a bit is she gonna be with murphy's parents like, her dad, hi, hi, Fawn, her dad is, like, in the hospital on life support right now. He's also a criminal, so there's that going for him. Her mother is dead. That poor girl is not having a good time right now. Also, remember the smartwatch that Felix found in the one that got away, like, right at the end? It used to be Wesley's smartwatch. It was in the trunk of Jess's car, and then it ended up in the trash or whatever. Not the one that got away. The episode after that. You know what I mean. Anyway, we never get any closure from that. Felix just says offhandedly, oh yeah, you're right, I'll tell them that it's not him or whatever because like he gets all these people texting him and flirting with him so i'm assuming that that was the end of the whole smartwatch thing i don't know but i'm wondering if max is gonna come back next season i miss him already he's he's probably gotta be filled in on a lot I would imagine. So, I don't know. This episode also tells us that Tyson's dad is a complete jerk because he had turned him away when Tyson had showed up in need of some sort of assistance or shelter because he was trying to escape from Wesley, which checks out in that episode where Murphy and Max went to go try and find Tyson's family or whatever, thinking that it was an ex-girlfriend. This show is so bizarre so i don't know season two it's gonna be a thing we know that um and it'll probably end up airing next spring as a mid-season premiere like this one did it will definitely be interesting i'm planning on watching it i don't know if you're planning on watching it i might do reviews on it episode by episode but i'm also going to be starting a podcast very soon with two friends of mine where we talk about this my other two friends are one of them is low vision like myself and the other one is completely blind but used to have sight so it will offer a different perspective also one of them has not seen a single episode of this show yet so that will be fresh but once the podcast is up and running it should be a few weeks i think before we do the first episode and recording and everything because we're all busy i will leave a link down in descriptions of future videos to that once there's a podcast i will let you know anyway <sighs> I don't know. This, um, this show did not end where I thought it would. I knew it wasn't going to be a happy ending, but I think that some things were dragged on a little too long. A lot of the episodes this season so far have been very slow paced and like not super captivating in my opinion so it's not like a bad show it's just that like i wouldn't say it's the best i don't know your mileage may vary anyway if you liked this video i don't know i can't tell you what to do man but i'll see you next time bye